Good morning. So I've got a slightly sad confession to make to, to start us off. I have spent my entire adult life in universities. <laughs> <laughs> universities on four continents, I might add, but that is only a very, very small consolation. With that confession out of the way, I've got to say that in all of my years in universities, I have never seen an IT staff hustle quite so much <laughs> as they have this morning to pull all of this together. I have also never seen anything, to tell you the truth, quite like what we're about to do. It promises to be unique, innovative, challenging, spectacular. We've never done it before. We're not quite sure what's going to happen. I encourage you to, to break out your laptop or your phone, to, to follow along, to pay attention. Um, we're going to try and put on a show that we are calling the Asia Pacific Master Blogging Challenge 2011. This is a first for us, for the ANU, for Canberra, but I think it's probably actually a first full stop. This is something that nobody has really tried before, and we're going to do our best to make it work. Um, and we're delighted that all of you can join us for this challenge. So this is the first time, and I've got to say, I'm absolutely <coughs> delighted that we have four master bloggers here with us um, who will be struggling for glory uh, in our 2011 challenge. <laughs> I understand, that some, I understand that some of you queried my attire, and um, for those of you with good eyes, you'll note that there's a chap in the, in the middle of this picture who's wearing a cravat. And any of the Australians in the audience will know that that is Matt Cravatalicious Preston. Um, and he's joined here by George Columbaris and the other guy, as you often know. <laughs> who are the three hosts of Australia's most popular television show. And for the past couple of years, this show, MasterChef, has taken Australia by storm every winter. And it is, I guess, with that show in mind, drawing on its potency, its popularity, that we came up with this idea of a master blogging challenge. Millions of Australia tune in to watch MasterChef. It's on pretty much every night of the week. Uh, and I should note that occasionally um, I can be counted among their number. So I know that the most popular part of MasterChef is something called the Mystery Box Challenge. And today, as you all saw, we, we had the privilege of our Dean, Professor Andrew McIntyre, unveiling our MasterChef. And its ingredients are laid out there on the table in front of us. Um, we have, just to remind you, a map of the world in Burmese, a Southeast Asian tri short, the Canton sweet and sour sauce with extra pineapple, some photocopy data from the Dean's Library, and in particular I should note that that data is from a book titled Rising China, Global Challenges and Opportunities. We have the 1985 edition of Culture Shock, the Philippines. We have a royal wedding commemorative tea towel for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, and we, of course, have an Asahi beer. So our master bloggers, drawing on this mystery box, will be encouraged to draw inspiration from at least three of those ingredients when they're coming up with their blogs. Um, but they will, I insist, all have to make use of the Asahi beer. <laughs> Apart from that, there are no rules. This is no hold barred blogging. They are encouraged to use their creativity um, and to really challenge themselves and challenge us with the best blogs that they can come up with. So I should get down to introducing our master blogging challenges. In the green corner, fresh from the hallow halls of Columbia University in the United States, we have East Asia Forum blog wizard, Dr. Shiro Armstrong. Shiro is a research fellow in our college with expertise in economics and international finance, uh, as well as the politics of the Asia Pacific region. He is also the co-founder of the East Asia Forum blog. He brings years of blogging experience to the table. 
Then in the red corner, we have Cynthia Bannon, who's been the diplomatic editor of the City Morning Herald and The Age for many years. She's a veteran journalist. Uh, she's currently completing a PhD uh, in our college. Uh, Cynthia warns me that she has never written a blog. <laughs> <laughs> Not once. So, ladies and gentlemen, and Cynthia, <laughs> let's see what she's got. <laughs> In the blue corner, we have Graham Dobell. He writes the Canberra column for The Interpreter, which is the blog of the Lowy Institute for International Policy based in Sydney. Graham was the ABC Southeast Asia radio correspondent in Singapore and has done several stints as the Canberra-based foreign affairs and defence correspondent for Radio Australia. Uh, he's been all over the place in his very long and distinguished journalistic career. He's covered the Falklands War, coups in Fiji, Thailand and the Philippines, um, Beijing after the pro-democracy movement, um, and also the return of Hong Kong to China. He blogs pretty much every week of the year. Uh, so Cynthia and Shiro, watch out. <laughs> and then in the yellow corner, we have Dr. Andrew Walker, who is the Associate Dean of the ANU College of Asia and the Pacific. For the past 10 years, he's worked on a wide sweep of issues surrounding rural development, resource management, and modernization in Northern Thailand. Andrew is the co-founder of uh, the ANU's New Mandala blog and he blogs pretty much every day. I was down at the local betting shop this morning, um, word on the street, and not hoping to heap too much pressure on him, is that Dr. Andrew Walker is the favourite. <laughs> That's the closing challenge to So, again, let's see what he's got. If you would like to follow along with us, uh, there are plenty of different ways you can do it. At this particular moment in time, you can get onto uh, the blog site, Asia Pacific Week slash challenge, should do the trick. Um, you can also get to us through the longer URL, um, or you can load us up through Twitter, etc., etc. I'm going to be moving around the room. Once our master bloggers get down to business, I'll have a mic. I would very much encourage you to ask questions, get involved, make comments. All of this is going to be happening up on the big screen. We'll have this other screen up here where there'll be other things flicking through. Should prove to be really quite exciting. As I said to start, we've never done this before. Nobody's ever done this before, so let's just see how we go. Master bloggers. We have a 40 minute clock. You have your mystery box. There are a range of ingredients for you to choose from. You, you need to choose at least three and everybody has to use the Asahi beer. Those are the only rules. The 2011 Asia Pacific Master Blogging Challenge starts now. <laughs> Nick, I've said there's a comment already on the blog. There is, Andrew. There are two. Oh, two. two comments? Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the comments in a minute. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> okay, so our bloggers are going to be kicking off and they're, they're just about to get themselves started with what's going to be 40 minutes of blogging. We're going to pull everything up on the screen here so that we can see um, what is going on on each of their own screens. And I should um, say while he's up here in front of everyone that Glenn Luttrell deserves a special round of applause for all of his work in getting this set up. Um, this is a feat of IT wizardry and I reckon um, by the end of it he's going to deserve a drink. So a <laughs> round of applause for Glenn. <laughs> Yourself. 
Any takers? <laughs> well, I hope they use it in a little detail. I guess for most of us, it's the most <laughs> most interesting part of it. And uh, how they probably mix it with the sauce. <laughs> But, but I know for sure they'd all be going for the beer, so those three regions probably would be the ones that we look forward to, especially the game of Okay, thanks for that. Great comment at the back there. All about the sweets in our stores, the Duke and Duchess and Cambridge and the beer. Quite, quite a combination. Okay, does anyone else have any ideas about what they might do if they were um, challenged with this particular mystery box? Yes. Uh, do you know which country the towel will be in? Ah, good question. Come on, okay. <laughs> Thailand, China, what have we got? It is cotton. 100% cotton. And it carries a code number 291R. <laughs> if that helps anyone, but as best I can determine, it doesn't have a place of manufacture. <laughs> so no, such a great question. Thank you. Any other thoughts? <laughs> All right. Well, we might then just get a quick update from our four master bloggers. You can see what they're getting up to here on the screen, and we'll be able to toggle through um, various of what they're playing around with. This is Andrew. In the Middleton family made their fortune, um, the Cape Middleton, the Cape Middleton, the Harrison, the original, made their fortune with Party Pieces website. It's a long term, and that's got that old occasion, which is always good for blogging. <laughs> Very Google friendly if you bring in to adult government. I'm worried to click on that link while we're here, but I see I have oh there it is, party web holiday. I'm not sure whether this is level, that's an aging on there possibly. Live in Skylands. Look at that, very fast. Okay, come on. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Cynthia, how do you find looking so far? I'm feeling um, a little bit uh, frozen in the headlights up here, but I have found, um, actually found this, this this week, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but it's, a, it's an illustration that I just think sums up my situation today. <laughs> <laughs> it's updating my blog. Um, as someone sits in front of what, what Graham tells me is, a, is an ancient printing press. It's a Ludlow. Yeah. It's a Ludlow liner and um, yeah, I have to say I'm, I'm sort of more from the off media school, and um, uh, so we'll just have to we'll just have to see how I go today. Please be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks, thanks, Cynthia. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to what you can cook up for us. How, how about you, Shiro? How are things playing out in your neck of the woods? Yeah, pretty good. I'm watching a few people tweet about it as we speak. <laughs> Um, someone doesn't find it too interesting. <laughs> um, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come put your hand up. Can I have a beer? Yeah, if you've got your yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, you're awesome. Um, I'll no. Okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks Shira. And Graham, how are you doing? Um, well, see, as always with these things, this is actually not a computer. This is actually just a, an old Remington typewriter. So it's all in the way that you construct it. And, and so you're sitting here in front of your Remington yes. typewriter, as, as, as I always do, and I roll, I roll the, uh, the carbon paper in, and when I've finished, I send uh, bits of paper off to that big Ludlow that uh, Cynthia's got. And, and that's how you do it? That's how you do it, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, wonderful. Well, we look forward to, to what you're coming up with. I, I see already that you're, you're playing around with the metaphors from the mystery yeah. oh, when you get paid, when you get paid by the word, you actually produce the words. <laughs> <laughs> A good lesson for everyone out there. Um, when you get paid by the word, go for the words. So we are all um, kicking along here. I suppose all watching and waiting, some with anticipation, uh, some with a measure of concern for exactly what all of this might need. <laughs> Does anybody here have much prior exposure to academic blogging? Hmm? Is this something that you're familiar with that makes sense in the university context? 
there. So looking at a few people Sorry. nodding their heads, a few frowning, a few people shaking their heads at me. Okay, which is, um, Always okay. I suppose that one of the reasons why we were excited to get this Asia Pacific Master Blogging Challenge off the ground is that within our College of Asia and Pacific, we've got a fair few people who spend a not inconsiderable amount of time uh, doing academic blogging in different formats. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Um, Shiro Armstrong is another. Andrew Walker, of course, uh, is another still. And between a fair number of, of us now in the college, we have come up with different ways of trying to get academic content out to much, much wider audiences. Um, we don't pretend that too many people read most of our academic journal articles, but we do know that a lot of people read what we put up on our blogs. So we are here as everything is <laughs> kicking along. Um, I suppose waiting with anticipation uh, for what our master blog is going to come up with next. Now you're allowed to do Mexican waves, you know. I mean, we need a bit of cheering, you know. I mean, you've got to be in, you've got to get into this, you know. Come on, sort of rah rah, change of ends. And Nick, <coughs> yeah, that's right. A bit of. I've forgotten how to upload photos. <laughs> come on, come on, Nick, the, the 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 fan. Come on, come on. A bit of wave. A bit of a wave. wave. Okay, wave from the audience for Craig. Yeah, okay, here we go. Wave. wave. Over this way. Over this way. Over this way. Back again! Back again! Yeah. <laughs> but, but haven't you ever been to the Sydney Cricket Ground? Uh, okay, <laughs> on, on three then with the wave. Okay, starting on this side. One, two, three. Yes! yes. Oh, and it's dying out. And, right, the four, and the four people at the back get to chuck chickens. Chung! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and again, Matt, one, two, three. Yay! Yeah. Oh, look at that. At atmosphere plus. Okay. <laughs> so, so we're kicking along, we've got the timer set now, it's counting down, 30 minutes to go, our master bloggers are right in the thick of it. Shira Armstrong has asked for some guidance on uploading photos um, with this particular blogging platform. Not every blogging platform is the same, um, but I can probably assist here. Does that incur a penalty? Oh. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we're there at the uh, select files. But I suppose one of the reasons why we were keen to, to put on this display of blogging talent and flair is that we hope that you all come away somewhat um, inspired um, to think that, okay, blogging doesn't necessarily have to be something that takes all day or, or needs a great deal of resources. Um, or extra effort, it can be something that can be almost done in your spare time. Any other comments from our audience? We've got one down the back. Um, Go for it. Nick, I happen to know the fact that your brother is in the audience here today. <laughs> and, and I actually just thought that he might have a comment on your performance. <laughs> He's got to have something to put into the mix. It's not just he's not just sitting there. If he wants to throw, he's got to think right. talks a lot. Come on, a bit of argy bargy for the audience. Yeah, a bit of argy bargy. Okay, no, great, 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 good suggestion. I think the, the Twitter feed is starting to light up. Um, is there anything there that anyone would like to draw our attention to? The Asahi should be the top prize. The Asahi should be the top prize. Okay, all right, that's um, a good recommendation. Oh, okay, hang on, we'll, we'll put some up. 
less chatting. Oh, okay, all right, hang on, all right, okay, hang on. Let's just see what, what we've got to with oh, our various so we, bloggers so far. So do you just have to hit publish? Is that all you have to do? Uh, yep. Okay, so we have a question, what is flaming? Yeah, what is flaming? Paul? And you can, <laughs> and you can, and I want, <laughs> oh, okay, repeat, help with, help with the spelling. Does anyone want to tell us what the trolling is all about? Oh, we've, got, we've had trolling, we've been playing. Okay. All right, in the meantime, I should just draw everyone's attention to the fact that on this um, side uh, screen here, we have Graham Nobel's um, evolving draft as his blog. So he has, as promised, using his old school typewriter style, decided that the best way of getting it up there is just to be banging out short paragraphs and then putting them up for the world to That's what decide. About. Short paragraphs. Blogging is all about short paragraphs. It, it is indeed, and it's much, much easier to read that way. And so we've got Graham's evolving draft here up on the screen for anybody who's inclined to digest that. And we have a comments or two. Do we get prizes for commenting? I'm Tom between the tea towel and the Dean's economic charts, and I have both. Um, great comment. Happy Gallagher suggests that they would um, uh, like to souvenir some of what we've got here. I reckon there could be bidders for the tea towel, I'm afraid, uh, but the economic charts are all yours. <laughs> Please feel free, those of you sitting in front of a computer, you can add comments, you can tweet about it, you can do whatever it is that you'd like to do to uh, participate in this. I think one of the, the nice things about blogging is that it needn't be a one-way conversation. So please do. Maybe it's giving someone a hard <laughs> Hang on, 23 minutes? Where do we get tight? Fast in the shower. <laughs> so, so, 17 minutes in, you've got 23 minutes. That's sad. Uh, tell him to shut up so we can rock. Thanks, Andrew. Good, good to hear that you're confident. And just to clarify, we have 23 minutes on the clock, now just over 22 minutes on the clock. So, we've got plenty of time for our bloggers to be pulling things together. I know that Shiro is ticking things off his list of Dean's mystery box ingredients. He wants to make sure that he gets his free minimum from the mystery box and then he also uses the Asahi beer. So we're all kicking along. We're all, I think, getting a bit of a flame of, of what this challenge is all about. It's not easy, this vlogging. Certainly not easy when you're doing it in front of a live audience. Hey, what, where's the book gone? I think the book... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on down here? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Eh? Are, all, are they all still on the table, boss? I think everyone else is still on the table, Graham. Right? Um, Bit. Oh, watch these people. <laughs> he has modernised the margin. I think as, as the time runs down, as 20 minutes turns into 10 minutes, you have to, well get it. have to plate it up, mate. He's <laughs> actually done a bit of it, yeah? <laughs> On the clock. I think that, as Shiro has suggested, this isn't easy. This is not easy at all. There's a uh, Twitter feed asking for points to be deducted for spelling mistakes. Oh, what? Oh, and they have a good speller. 
We could sell you like a hand up and play with tweet that points should be deducted for spelling errors. Okay. Can, we, can we put a minus on the end of the tweet? Yeah. 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 Can we put a mic here in front of you gentlemen at the back there? Can you tell us why you think spelling is so important for this I'll just say it's important for communication. Self-Ukrainia. Very bad 
But you know, I'm trying to relate it to something I know. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Which bit do you know about? How do you know about that? Which bit do you know about? <laughs> Not about the 500. But, yeah. um, so you, you're really I've digging in really deep here, boy. <laughs> I, I've got a, you know, I'm only going to write on something I'm not. <laughs> well. I researched Japan, China, trade relations, politics. Um, Gone for that angle. Yeah. Um, you know, I find a topical book, and so I've got Asahi in here somewhere. Uh, a couple of pictures, spice it up a bit, and you know some catchy words like Andrew mentioned that we can bring some people on on the bus. Absolutely, yeah. to your sex in there. Anything. Okay, so Sh Shiro suggested that he's going to, to use a bit of Google Bay, I think, as it's called in the blogging world. So sex and orgy are going to be terms that the Google algorithm is going to pick up on and hopefully drive traffic towards his blog. Okay, we've got, we've got a, um, a tweet that's oh. come through. Um, it suggests that Shiro is recycling his, his first ever blog post. So um, one, of the, um, one of the issues with blogging is that there can, there can be efforts to repeat. Would, would there be a response from Shiro at this point? I've used the same picture and link to the post. I don't think that's crazy. Are we up? Yep. Well, I'll explain that later. Okay, Shiro's going to explain his technique later on. Um, let's, let's see if there are any other comments from further down the line. Graham, how, how are you finding things? Oh, it's good. It's good, isn't it? It's relaxing. That's good. <laughs> Japanese, Japanese, um, and Japanese. Japanese. Japanese, yeah. That's good. Okay, good. All right, so Gra Graham's looking very relaxed. We have some, uh, some more comments that have are coming here, so let's have a look. We have da, 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 da. all right, read the Huffington Post. We have Go Cynthia. Looking Go forward Cynthia. To reading your first blog suggests you write about Nick Farrelly's cravat. <laughs> um, wonderful suggestion. Is smoke coming out of the server a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a question from the nerds. <laughs> How do bloggers handle the added pineapple? <laughs> uh, in the source without it overpowering the other items. Now that's a great question. Right? That's one for our bloggers to mull over. Andrew Sullivan, the ultimate master blogger, says you have to update your blog at least every day in order to be pertinent. Thoughts from our master bloggers? That's a great question. Well, there's a comment there that I'll read out in the spirit of free exchange of ideas of all sorts. There's a shower in the handicapped toilet outside. <laughs> um, and that's all we've got from the list at the moment. Let's just maybe take a quick poll of our master bloggers. When they're producing blogs or reading blogs or, or what have you, do they think that updating a blog regularly is a, is a key thing to bear in mind? Let's start with you, Andrew. Um, the content is the key, but I think my name is very, very good. Every day. Mm -hmm. I think otherwise, if you want people to come back regularly, you can send the same stuff, and they might come back. So I think that's to the extent that we've achieved any success with New Man Dars, which I think we've had a little bit, is being that on average we've posted a post every day for five years. So I think that's, that's how you build up an audience. Thanks, Andrew. Some key points there. Cynthia, what about you? When you're reading blogs, is it important that they're updated regularly? Oh, yes, definitely. Otherwise, you're going to look at it once more, you know, if you look at it seven times, it's not being updated, you're not really going to go back again. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's pretty critical. Okay, how does that work for you, Shiro? Does East Asia Forum have to get updated every day? Um, yeah, we put two pieces up a day, uh, and it's exactly as Andrew said. You want people coming back and being engaged. Um, and just one more thing, I don't know, you guys have probably checked out the web page, and I've seen a few magazines floating, but we do try to write from research and link back to the research. So um, most of our posts, um, they all go through a peer review and editorial process. But quite often they, they link to, to deeper research. And the idea is to try and communicate these 30 page research papers into something policy makers or, you know, everyone can read in that board. So that's it. Okay, thanks, Jira. And what, what about you, Graham? How often do you think you need to blog on the interpreter to, to keep people interested? 
Uh, well, see, as I, as I said, my mental frame is actually it's a it's a typewriter. You know? So it's whenever I want to, whenever I run a roll of a bit of carbon paper. In. Now, the, I think the beauty of, of the of the web is that when there are when uh, when every every minute is a deadline, there's actually no deadline. So you file whenever you feel like it. I mean, that's the great freedom. Uh, I find it much more liberating. I, I for, for decades I actually had to to deal with disciplines where there was a half hour TV bulletin that had to be fed and an hourly radio bulletin. This stuff is great because uh, if every moment's a deadline, then there's no deadline. Great, great. thanks. Thanks, Graham. I think those are some really insightful um, insights there and based on a very long and distinguished career as an Australian journalist, blogging does change the rules and it means that every minute can be a deadline, which is a quite remarkable thing. Do we have any comments from the audience now? Anybody like to shout out? Do you have anything to say? How are we going for time? We have, I think, about 10 minutes left now. We can. Um, <laughs> the we have about 10 minutes and 33 seconds there. <laughs> <laughs>
Right, thank, thank you, Darrell. Right, maybe we have uh, a question or a comment here and then another one. Yes, Paul. Thanks for coming from the crowd. Thank you for some of your and blogging. I would suggest looking at somehow networking with established blogs. There's a lot going on around. It's a much more effective way than on the web. You know, the web is not on, on WordPress. Um, I think if you can demonstrate that you've got something interesting to say, no one else is saying it, and you can do so in an articulate way that stimulates a bit of discussion, then uh, the last blog would be pretty keen to hear from you, so um, yeah, it's going to be shot. That's a good tip. Thanks for that, Paul. So we have another one over here, and then on this side. Yeah, one of the things I think is really important with blogging is, is relevance. So, you know, in Asia, uh, East Asia Forum, uh, we used to have a fairly regular meetings uh, each week sort of saying uh, what are the big issues that, that come out this week and, and what, what are the important things that's happened in the previous week. Uh, and basically, setting the agenda, make sure we knew that the posts that were going to be going out were on things that people cared about and were interested in now. Uh, because when people search for what they want to read, you know, they're, they're doing searches for things they're already interested in. They don't stumble across these stage before unless it's on something that's Great, thanks, Tom. I think that's another really key point there. There are lots of good blogs out there already, but the key thing with content and driving readership is that it's got to be relevant to somebody, and there can be all kinds of niche topics that can, can build a big readership. We have another comment here. Uh, just, a, just a short comment. For the Mandara, I think it's not the content, it's key. I think, I think the key is the content. <laughs> That's, that's very nice. And we have, we have another comment over here. I'm sorry, I, I don't have a comment, but actually I have a question. Um, so uh, when I started doing my own blog, blog a few years ago, I, I just um, do the personal blogs because at the time I was in my high school. So I know, I mean, most of our panelists today, they are actually doing academic blogs. So my question is that when you uh, when, when you want to both show your academic interest and, and your you know uh, your story of life, do you choose to put this two types of story in the same blog, or do you prefer have a personal blog and an academic blog? That's, that's a terrific question, and I'm sure it's one that is um, on many other people's minds as well. So I just want to get some quick reactions from our panelists, or at least one or two of them. <laughs> Four minutes to go now, so I won't distract you for long, Andrew, but just let me ask you. <laughs> mix, mixing uh, business with pleasure, as it were, um, would you ever put up personal matters on your yeah, academic you blog? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like a what's personal. I think, like someone said before, what's the key to make an academic blog interesting? And I think it's, in a sense, to have it academically informed, but not overly academic. And I think here yeah, there's a real difference between the, the work they do in this stage before and what we do in the end are. We don't peer review. Um, you know, we have some review process for, for guest posts that we get sent in. Um, but, but for me, a little bit of hit and miss, a little bit of spontaneity. I think humour is important. Um, you know, I'm certainly not saying that that happens, but I think it's, it's a different sort of approach. And, um, and I think that, that means mixing a bit of your personal stuff into how you blog. Yeah, I think that's very important. Great. Thank, thanks, Andrew. And I just might ask Shiro for a quick response there. Would, would East Asia Forum ever verge into dealing with more personal matters? Uh, not really, no. We keep that um, for other private blogs. Yeah. Did you? It's a little dry. <laughs> it's a little dry in that sense, but um, you know, we, we have a, a call. Cool. So, um, we have a, a purpose and a strategy, and you know, we have a bit of fun with the pictures sometimes. But in terms of, you know, there are a lot of blogs out there. You probably read more the Marginal Revolution and the others that that you know have ideas or one sentence posts and they're personal and they're funny. People asking for good restaurants here and there. People engage, but it's a very different style. Yeah. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank, thanks for that, Shiro. And I will leave the audience wondering whether you yourself have a personal blog, perhaps written under some pseudonym that none of us have thus decided. Do we have less than two minutes on the clock? Can we have a look to see if there are any comments that have come through in the past five or so minutes? <laughs> Uh, let's just scroll up there. Um, we've got first bid for the economic charts, two dollars from Andrew. Picks from the shower or it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> cheap, cheap stuff, I might say, uh, in the presence of the associate dean of the college. Um, but as you probably picked up by now, that's all in the spirit of this event and all, I think, also in the spirit of good academic blogging. There can be a bit of cheeky back and forth. We don't have very long at all on the clock now. Um, if there are any final comments from the audience, um, we'll hear those. Otherwise, we just might wait for our master bloggers to wrap things up. They have something like one minute to go. Let's give them a round of applause. So for the final minute now, we'll just be scrolling through, seeing what they've all got up on their various screens here. Um, my first tennis lesson, and I've just entered Wimbledon, um, is a headline, provocative headline, and a good one. Um, we've got the Graham Nobel blog, which seems to be emerging quickly. I note that he hasn't uh, changed his headline yet. Um, any thoughts on the headline, Graham? <laughs> It's just such a great headline. I think it'll be there for days. I mean, you know, when you when you when you hit it the first time, you don't you don't change. Okay, thanks for that, man. Okay, we've got ten seconds. <laughs> the 2011 Asia Pacific Master Blogging Challenge, as you would all by now appreciate, has been something of an experiment. And <laughs> to, get, to give ourselves a bit more of a sense of how it's all playing out, what I'd like us to do now is just to take a minute, just to all take a deep breath, uh, and then we're going to ask each of our master bloggers to talk through what they managed to do over the past 40 minutes, talk through perhaps some of the successes that they would attribute to their work, um, but also to highlight any of the issues where they, they ran into obstacles um, or perhaps where things didn't go quite according to plan. Um, so our bloggers have basically all got themselves set up. We have, I think, everybody's blog post now up on the website. So those of you with a, a laptop or a phone uh, in front of yourself will be able to, to log in and have a look at all of them. Do feel free to, to share your screen if, if that proves an easier way of, of looking through things. But what we will do now is we will go through each of the blogs um, and they'll be up on both of the big screens at the same time. And we might start with Andrew Walker's blog. Um, which is up on the screen now. Um, Kate and Will's wedding gaff. Um, and it begins anthropologist, etc., etc., etc. Hang on, I thought it was his block. It, it is, it is. And so we're, we're going to go now. See if he's bloody academic. Uh, <laughs> Are there going to be footnotes as well? <laughs> or are we using the Harvard system? There is a There is an in text record. Ah, oh, very good. Well, as soon as I saw the mystery box, I knew I had to sort of start with the royal wedding. Um, and I was trying to sort of do something about the exchange and wedding as exchange and stuff like that. But um, didn't quite get there, but I sort of bought, bought in the Burmese element. And I think I've got all the elements in the dish there. Um, I've got illustration, which is you know, not the perfect illustration, but it's eye catching. Um, I don't know, people will be the judge. And I've got the Pacific element in there, as you saw in the very first line. It's very, very nice. Did you, did you find this particularly difficult, Andrew? Yeah, I did, yeah, without the shower. I, <laughs> um, I 
Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll come back to you, but those of you who've got a screen in front of you can, can read Andrew's blog in full. I just might ask Cynthia um, how you went um, and yeah, how you found your experience of blogging for the very first time. Uh, I have to say I found it very difficult, and, and I think that's because when I write an opinion piece, um, I usually have like a burning issue that I really want to write about, and when you're you know sort of based under pressure and and having to you know make sense of something that you haven't really you know had that time whether it's in the shower or somewhere else to sort of mull over and think you know why do I feel so strongly about this. It is, it's really hard. It's, it's very hard to, to, to do it. So full credit to those people who do it all the time because I don't think it's easy. And I would have liked to put some illustrations up there, but I tried and I couldn't work out how to do it. So um, I'm sorry that mine's not very colourful. <laughs> <laughs> You're more a journalist than an academic. I am more a journalist. Yeah. Yeah, it's <coughs> Thanks, Cynthia. And again, those of you with the screen in front of you can read through Cynthia's very first blog post, which is titled, My First Tennis Lesson and I've Just Entered Wimbledon. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, do feel free to, to scrutinise and digest that one. Um, Shiro, how would you go? Um, okay. Uh, I know what you're saying, Liv. It's, it's hard to just blog with a timeline because we are... Um, I mean, when I write something, I do write around an issue that I want to write about. Maybe I've just written a paper or something I've written about before is in the news, so it's topical. And I take seriously, you know, a day to write a piece. Half a day, shortest, but, um, you know, on average, probably a day. They take a long time to write. So doing this in 40 minutes is pretty rough. But, um, I think I covered most of the elements. Well, more than half. I got a pineapple in there at the end. I got this. Can you see that? Sexy picture from BBC and to do with the orgy. <laughs> <laughs> BBC, it's all right. Um, yeah, that's um, that's about it. Thank you. Okay, th thanks, Shiro. For those of you, yeah, you should be able to make that out there. It's still a sort of somewhat busty silhouette against the Chinese flag as the BBC's icon for that particular news story. <laughs> and now to turning to Graham. Um, I think. I think she, I think Shira is far too uh, too uh, modest. I mean, he's learnt the first law of blogging: put sex in, and it'll be a bit more <laughs> hits. <interesting. laughs> and and Graham, how did, how did you find your your blogging today? Um, fine. I I, I, um, I suppose see. I spent many decades doing radio, um, and uh, radio is proof positive of the line that ignorance is never any barrier to journalism. <laughs> and, and can you talk us through a bit of what you actually did with, um, with your approach to ignorance and journalism mm. today? Well, when in doubt, alliterate. So I started with a bit of alliteration and went from there. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. All right, well, that gives you all a bit of a flavour for how our different master bloggers have done. Do we have any new comments that have come in? No? Everyone quiet. We have some tweets up on the screen. Kudos to the master bloggers, impressive, innovative, cool. Asia Pacific master blogging challenge has, has finished. Who will win? That's the question on my mind too. Who will win? And we'll come to that in about three or four or five minutes' time. In the meanwhile, though, I think it'd be nice if we did just get some reactions from the audience. Okay? It'd be nice if you all told the master bloggers, bloggers a bit about what you think they've done here for us today. Would anybody like to kick us off? Was it as stressful as an exam? Okay, so the question is, was it as stressful as an exam? I don't have a hundred and something people watching me when I'm <laughs> working on an exam. <laughs> it's a little bit stressful, yeah. <laughs> um, absolutely, I think it is stressful. It's very brave of our master bloggers to, to come here, but very few of us would ever be in a situation where we actually have our screen being put up on a big screen for a hundred other people to, to read as you're doing it. That's really quite a confronting situation, so kudos to everyone. Um, any other comments or questions for our master bloggers? Well, just as someone who doesn't follow um, many academic blogs or anything, I want to say congratulations to the organisers and the bloggers because you've definitely inspired me to kind of go out there and look it up because it seems to be a really exciting thing, so thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, that's very exciting because 
being involved in this, to me, my main objective is just to say to you, you, you can do it. You can blog. It's, it's not that difficult. And my experience, my experience with students too, is that um, often people get tied up in writing block and they can't. They're trying to work on a chapter and they're trying to write a paper. And I just say, just write a short blog post, put it out there, and see what comes back. And often it gets people's ideas going, just, just the responses you get. So I really, really encourage you, who both as, as an academic or as a student, just make it part of your normal writing practice. And I think it, it doesn't have to reduce the amount of other writing you do, it increases it. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, as all researchers, we probably know that if you publish a paper in a journal, you know, a dozen people may read it, may not read it, you know, you might get five people reading. If you take the main points, your findings, put it on a blog, your own blog, or link to, to a much bigger blog with an audience, you know, you automatically get a thousand people having a look at it. Um, so I think it's definitely a good idea. It should be part of your outreach for your research. It's a no-brainer to me. Great. Thanks, Shira. Yeah, great. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think um, one of the stories that I like, and it reflects back, I suppose, on my the way I think about writing is about Remington's or Olivetti's. But people who think about typewriters as, as, as that process, um, one of my great uh, favourite columnists in years gone by was a guy called James Reston, who wrote for the New York Times. And Reston uh, was uh, not writing his column for a month because the New York Times was on strike. And a, a friend bumped into him in Washington and said, why are you looking so absolutely bereft and lost? And Reston, I thought, came up with a classic journalist's line, which was, how do I know what I think until I see what I write? And I think that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Graham. We, we have another comment from the audience here. Actually, I mean, uh, initially, just a few weeks back, I think four or five weeks back, I was inspired to blog by seeing one of the lecturer blog. Then I started my blog, but I didn't know how to do it. And I seek support with one of my IT colleagues who's doing a PhD in UDS. Then from there, I learned to blog. Um, and I'm writing and I'm posting a few academic related blog as well. And whoever asks me related to my field, I link to them and go and see visit like that. But really, this type of academic I mean, blogging has Again, the, another insight, uh, I mean, and also the lesson that we can even uh, I mean, blog among the admins of the world and, I mean, get to learn more about the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in our own field or can get other insights, other inputs in uh, related to field. Thanks a lot for organizing this master blog. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Our, our pleasure. We have another comment? No? Okay. All right, any, any very final comments from the audience? So it's now... There's one up there. We have one over here, okay. <coughs> yes, thank you, Sunsani. Um, comment here. Well, we can take another couple of comments. It's 12.15, we'll be breaking for lunch at 12.30. And in the meantime, uh, we will have an opportunity to decide on the Asian Pacific Master Blogger 2011. Uh, and we'll come to how we're going to do that precisely in the next few minutes. The first Sunsi. I was just wondering, uh, as an academic, I came from a science background and I know that research is something that's really come close to people's chest. So how do you go about putting your ideas um, out on the World Wide Web? Um, are you worried that people will steal your ideas and work for themselves and um, there's no, no way to hold them accountable? Great, thank, thank you, Sam. So I think there's some likely to be some interesting responses to that. They will need to be brief. Andrew, what's your feel? I think the best insurance is to have ideas so eccentric that no one <laughs> works for me. So. Thanks, Andrew. Um, Cynthia, how, how would you approach that as a journalist? Do you think that um, academics should be cautious about getting their ideas out to wider audiences? Um, well, I, I mean, I can't say I have any personal experience um, of that and, and it's you know it's a risk that you take and I guess you just have to weigh up. Um, you know, you, you you spend so much time on, on your research and it means so much to you, you know, what's the point unless you can share it with other people and, and I guess that there are risks involved but um, you know I think that's a judgment we have to make. Thanks Cynthia. Sure. 
Yeah, I, I'm not so worried about people stealing my ideas or anything. I mean, um, I'll be more, I mean, the, the benefit far outweighs the cost, I think, of getting your ideas up there quickly before anyone else does, if, especially if it's, you know, something on the Asian Pacific or something very topical that you're working on, or if you have a finding in science. I mean, if you put that up there, it's, it's dated, you know, someone copies it, you can sort of point to the fact that, well, you know, I've found this first. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried, I don't think you should do too much. I mean, you don't want to give away everything all at once and, um, yeah, you might, you might want to paint them some stuff. But apart from that, I've, I've got no problem. Great, thanks, Jira. And, and what about you, Gray? Do you think that there are, there are real risks here for academics or do the opportunities outweigh those? Yeah, I suppose there's a... Well, you're talking about two different things, aren't you? You're talking about research and you're talking about what you'd call publishing. I mean, I think you're probably talking about two different parts of the field. Um, and I, I can... I, I think I can theoretically understand what you're saying about the, the importance of your research. I, mean, I suppose... I come from a, a game where, um, um, you know, one, one incident is an anecdote and two incidences are statistical evidence. So, you know, it's the, the, the research side of what journalists do is sometimes not quite as rigorous as what you guys do. Um, but the beauty, I think, of, uh, of this sort of stuff is that you can actually publish uh, as you go and actually make more claim, lay more claim to the field as you're going through it. And I would have thought from dealing with academics over the years that that issue of publishing in some ways might be a little less than it once was. You know, you don't necessarily have to do everything through peer review. Uh, you can actually put some stuff out there. And it's always amazing what you get back. Uh, the, the real fun part I often find is uh, the starting point is what you put out there, but often the really interesting stuff is what you get back. Great. Thank, thanks, Graham. I think that's a, a very nice note on which we will end our... Um, effort to get some conversation going between you, the audience, and our panel of master bloggers. Uh, there seem to be uh, a range of tweets that have also come in here. Um, uh, profound wisdom from Graham, how do I know what I think until I write? Um, and of course, this question that lingers over the entirety of our proceedings today who will win? The game is the winner. <laughs> the game is the winner. Every master blogger is a winner. But if you're so inclined, what we have the opportunity to do now, courtesy of uh, <laughs> courtesy of some very very smart Australian scientists, is an opportunity to actually determine by audience vote the Asian Pacific Master Blogger 2011. So. The way that this works is that you can either ring the number in question from an Australian Quick. mobile <laughs> or you can um, or you can send an SMS with the two final red digits. So that's 96 for Cynthia, 97 for Shiro, 98 for Graham, 99 for Andrew. Um, to the number up on the screen, I think this is a free of charge from Australian. Uh, free of charge from Australian mobile phone numbers, um, so there should be no dramas for you. I actually think you can also vote as many times as you like. <laughs> <laughs> so that old age, vote early, vote often. Um, and, very much worth and vote with time. both hands. <laughs> And That's all you get, a busy tone. And oh, right. And the, all, you is, all you get is a busy tone. And here we're seeing uh, the votes go up on the screen. Yeah, um, hey. we don't need the six one. We don't need to have the six one. You don't need the six one. Just the local number. If you got Stop voting, Andrew. Andrew. How, many phones, <laughs> how many phones has Andrew got? <laughs> I think I've put up an additional post, if anyone's interested. In stuff. OK, so Andrew's put up an additional post, which we can now have a look at on this screen over here. While we're doing that, we have our master blogging audience popularity contest. Uh, 
which is a term who's done best. Ed, who's inspiration, a shower head. Um, he's also up there for those of you like to, to see his, um, his other episodes today. Uh, we've had 13 votes so far. Ed, you're still in front. We're going to close down the voting in just over two minutes. So for those of you who'd like to vote, and, and those of you who are Australian phone, if you have um, an uh, international <laughs> 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 delegacy next to you, if you'd like to share your phone with them, please do so. Um, please, of course, try and, and get as many phones as possible. That's pretty neck and neck, isn't it? That's neck and neck. Yo, beauty! <laughs> Well, come on, Cynthia, so you've got a phone. Another minute or so for votes to continue. Yeah, but, come on, vote. We're going to show up now so we have it in the book. Actually, we're ready. So we're going to show up here. Now, this is a great question that the world is for world. Come on, Michael, come on. Keep going. Can we get a show of hands of those of you who have actually read any of the blog posts today? That's not, that's not bad. So that would be about a third of the audience have read at least some of the blog posts. Come on, keep voting. Okay, the voting is going gangbusters here. Um, should I stop it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote a suggestion that we stop We've got to add another minute to go. Go, Cynthia! Go, Cynthia, come on! Come on, Cynthia! We want Cynthia! Yes! Cynthia's doing Come on! Take the left. phone off Andrew for start. <laughs> 27 seconds left for the 2011 oh, go. 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 Challenge. Yes, it's it. <laughs> Andrew Morgan is still in front. Shiro! Shiro! Oh, go! Go, Cynthia! Going down the road. What's that? And the time no, is... Down. Time is up now. Oh. Round of applause. Oh. As I said, this is an application... Oh, no, it's tricky! This is... This, this is an application provided by some, some very clever Australian scientists who, who worked out a way to make this happen. It does appear as though some may still be voting, but we have um, we finished our survey. And Sam, we're now going to be in a position to see the very final tally that's coming up on the screen. 200 votes. <laughs> So this is actually a tie election. <laughs> yeah, hey, well, where's my, hang on, where's my envelope? <laughs> I, mean, I didn't realise we were doing it to tie rules. Oh. Thanks, Graham. 2011 Master Blogging Challenge, no old bar, no rules, except you had to use the Asahi beer. Our Master Bloggers have showered themselves in glory. Um, I think that the audience is somewhat divided on which approach they prefer to, to this kind of Master Blogging event. But I think what we've all seen is an absolutely stellar effort by our four Master Bloggers. Uh, they have taken time out of their very busy schedules to be with us here today, and I think they all deserve a very hearty round of applause. Thank you very much. There you go. Thanks, Graham. 
Thank you, Shiro. Thank you very much. Look at the green one. The green one for Shiro. Pink one for Sister. And for Andrew, you have our belt with an eagle and a star. This is. I just have to read it to you. It reads World Wrestling Champion. 2011 Asia Pacific Master Blogging Challenge. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you for taking this seriously, but not too seriously. And thank you also for giving so much wonderful support to all of our master blogs. Thanks again.